three minutes. Okay, we got three minutes. The stream. Does anybody uh, get the? We're gonna go live in a couple minutes. He's sending up. Uh, Brad's sending it up now for you too. So we're gonna be live in a minute. She's Right now, so all right. Give me one okay. second, one second. Let me just turn on the record. On. I got a couple of papers. Okay. Yeah. okay, we're going to order the Franklin Regional School Board Directors made for Monday, May 18th, 2020. You can stand for the salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. flag. The United States of America, and to the republic for which it was stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice for all. For all. Thank you. A reading of the mission statement, we the French and regional school community strive for excellence, learning, achievement, and citizenship in all we do. Roll call. Mr. English. Here. Mr. Kozlowski. Here. Mr. Mitterator. Here. Mr. Nevin. Here. Mr. Scheinert. Here. Mr. Weinman. Here. Mrs. Wolleen. Here. Mr. Yant. Okay. He said here. here. Mr. Yingling. Here. Okay. We were in executive session on May 8th on a personnel issue. Now we're going to election of a board treasurer. We did this in December and our board treasurer right now is Scott Wyman. And I want to make a motion to re-elect Scott Wyman as our board treasurer. Second. Go oh, yeah. Who seconded it? Oh, yeah. Okay, motion made by Yingling, second by Yan. Any other nominations for board treasurer? Again, any other nominations for board treasurer? Hearing none, nominations are closed. 
All in favor of Scott Wyman as treasurer? Aye. 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 Motion carries 9 0. I didn't uh, vote aye, President Yingling. I vote no. You voted no. Very well. Eight to one. Okay. Superintendent's report, Dr. Perino. Good evening. Um, I, I'd like to turn this over to Nancy, Nancy Gorgas. Uh, last at the last meeting. I forgot to give her the opportunity to present an update on the Sloan uh, project. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Nancy. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Shrekagos, if you could bring up the presentation on the screen, that'd be great. Yeah. You're on mute, Nancy. Uh, Doc, I, I don't also have... present. I just asked to be allowed to present. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. I see. Can, can you give her rights to pre present from her screen, screen, Mr. Schreckengross? I'm doing it right now. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for the time. Dr. Prano, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to present uh, today. Um, I did update the slideshow so the ones that I had prepared for the fourth hopefully you guys received and this is a uh, current update as of today. So for the primary school uh, we have completed the phase 1c all the classrooms are done and the district has been able to um, go ahead and move um, the teachers um, furniture and uh, materials into those classrooms and they'll be ready for uh, a start of school in August. Um, hopefully um, the kids and the students, or sorry, the teachers and the students come back in August. Also for phase C, we've phase C, one C, we actually started the um, uh, outdoor uh, exterior siding um, on phase one C. We're starting with one C, but then they'll continue into 1D as well as over at the cafeteria edition. So at the cafeteria edition, this is just uh, what it looks like. This was as of Friday of last week. And we are working on drywall finishing as well as some mechanical uh, rough-ins. You can see the new ductwork in there. For the admin um, edition, uh, we have um, continued with drywall finishing. Um, this uh, picture here to the left is the entrance and you'll notice that uh, we have opened the addition into uh, the existing school. And then this is on the right hand side, this is actually the creative arts center. So that there's some uh, bulkheads and some drywall here that's been finished. And then we continue with some of the final uh, mechanical systems in the addition, um, duct work and uh, piping for some of the mechanical systems as well as the cabinet unit heater is here in uh, the vestibule. They also installed last week the storefronts. Um, the glass will be um, installed soon. In phase four, which is the gymnasium, um, the general contractor has actually started opening um, the, and taking out the uh, wall um, that will go from in from the from the gym into the creative arts center. And here is this is a little closer to the opening um, from the phase one D section. You can see. Um, to the right um, where you can now enter into the gymnasium as well as um, moving forward into the main uh, portion of the school. For 5A, 5A is a library. Um, they have completed all the demo work for, for the, the library. 
and the mechanical systems have begun. Um, uh, fire alarm and lighting uh, roughens. Um, you can see canned lights in the photo over to the right. It's really difficult to see in this picture, but we also have um, the sprinkler lines uh, run in this bulkhead. And then this is uh, one of our temporary classrooms, which we established at the very beginning of the project. This is a classroom that's now been moved into the 1C edition. And so we have taken over and, uh, and uh, done the demo in these temporary classrooms. These will all be a part of the library. 5B is um, underway. All the demo is complete and we're working on mechanical systems. This is one of the um, restrooms, so all the plumbing roughins, as well as hot and wa uh, cold water piping up here in the ceiling on the right hand side. Again, here from mechanical systems, we have um, another unit heater um, at the exit. And um, again, a gentleman uh, working on piping um, for mechanical systems. As well as our electrical contractor, this is one of the new panels that run in wire. And um, on the right hand side, um, some of the lighting um, wiring roughens for the overhead for a classroom. The GC has also um, installed as a part of the framing, the, the, all the door frames have been installed in this area as well. 6A, uh, this is the admin portion of 6A. 6A is the main portion or main phase that was gonna take place over the summer. Um, this is one of the areas that we got a jump start on. Um, we've completed majority of the demo. And um, you can see this is the original front entrance. And um, this is where the, um, here to the kind of in the center here is where the administration principal's office um, was previously. So our plumbing uh, contractor has run all of the plumbing underground. This is where we're going to have a large a gang restroom, restrooms. Um, this is this wall here to the uh, far left is um, an adjacent wall to the gym. Um, so this will be one of the few places where we're going to have a, a large um, gang, what we would call a gang restroom. And uh, all in the same day, they had it all prepped and ready, and then they, they've done the concrete patching as well. Sorry about that. Um, we also have received um, and have some rooftop units that are ready to be installed. Once um, we're ready and, and the mechanical roughens are ready for that, they'll bring another crane in and these will be set on the roof. Our site work has also um, started ahead of schedule um, because of the uh, students and teachers not coming back. Um, so this is one of the retention ponds. We needed to have this complete um, prior to them actually starting the parking lot areas uh, for the primary school. And as a part of this, all new sidewalks um, are going to be installed. So they have completely demoed all of the sidewalks that were in the front of the building originally. This is still the same construction costs based on our um, April payouts. This is the same one that was included in your uh, slideshow that was, was provided for the fourth, as well as the same um, paint order summary. As far as overall, um, we're at 175 days with no reportables for the project. As I stated before, 1C is complete and all of our ongoing projects, phase 1D, 4, 5A, 5B, and 6A are all to be finished for the start of school. One little caveat, we are um, going to have the 5A class uh, phase since that's the library. Our, um, our plan is to have that done in July to allow the district the time that they need. Um, the library, because of the amount of work associated to doing that move in, we're gonna have them uh, turned over so that they have the time to do that move in. Moving forward, um, 
area A for the cafeteria, they'll be finishing up the drywall um, painting. And as I mentioned before, those exterior panels will um, be finishing up getting the exterior skin complete. Um, phase D addition will be painting. We'll start the ceiling grid. Um, like I said before, we'll have storefront glass installed as well. They'll be finishing up the demo of that wall between uh, the gym and the Creative Arts Center in phase four, as well as the mechanical rough-ins. For 5A, we have a little bit of interior framing to complete, and then they need to finish up all of the mechanical rough-ins in there. 5B, also mechanical rough-ins need to finish up, and then we'll be starting drywall. And then 5-6A, they'll be continuing with mechanical rough-ins and uh, starting their interior framings interior framing there. Does anybody have any questions associated to the primary school before I move on to the intermediate? Nancy, this is Paul Shiner. It looks like the, the progress has been really excellent. Um, and I see a lot of completes down there under the schedule section. It, what is left to do after school theoretically would start in August over at, uh, at the elementary school? So once school begins um, and we, the 5B phase, those classrooms will allow the, the remaining classrooms that we need to renovate to be moved into those um, 5B classrooms. And we'll start phase 6B, which is the remainder of all the kinder kindergarten classrooms on that a area A uh, portion of the building. We will also have the kitchen renovation. Um, we have a number of restrooms um, that will need to be renovated in the finishing up of um, all the corridor spaces. Um, those are primarily the areas. We will have um, the majority of um, the renovation completed by the end of this um, uh, phase, or sorry, this summer. But um, I believe that um, I did provide two different phasing documents that I hope was shared with the board. One is where we currently are, and then the other is one showing what the school will be, what's going to be complete and the remaining phases for um, the remainder of the year. Um, so hopefully that, if you could reference that, and obviously if there's any additional questions, by all means, uh, send them to uh, Mr. Heck or Dr. Perano, and I'm sure they'll forward them to me to, to um, answer. So I guess I'm uh, concluding that we're at least on schedule or in some instances ahead of schedule. And yeah. based on the phasing uh, of this project, I don't see any reason why students wouldn't be able to use the facility as planned, even though there's still some work to be done. Uh, in August, is that is that accurate? Yes, we're our our team is quite confident that we're going to accomplish the only areas where you know we we are trying to take keep a close eye on is because of the COVID nineteen, we're trying to keep a close eye on some of the materials. Um, casework is one of the items that um, you know we need to be you know very mindful of delivery dates and things like that because some of this. Um, you know, the shutdown has affected some of the delivery dates. Um, as of right now, our team is confident that everything will be finished as planned for August. And, and like I said, um, the big one that we've gotten a jump start on is the 6A, the admin area, which was where our real critical time frame, timeline was. So us getting that um, ahead of schedule has been significant for the progress of the schedule, as well as um, our site work for the primary school. We got a jump start on starting all of the parking lot areas. So that has been significant um, in helping us make sure that we're gonna be on target for our start of school in August. How is work progressing in light of the COVID-19 restrictions we're all living with these days? The um, so, yes, yeah, so one of the very convenient things for the Sloan, the primary school for us is because we have so many phases 
currently underway. Um, what our team has been working on is allowing one set of contractors, you know, one contractor in each phase um, to allow that social distancing as best we can. Um, I was on site on Friday. Um, everyone um, was had masks, were wearing masks, um, and working towards the, and, and doing their best to keep that social distancing that's required. And our team, um, each contractor is requ required to do a health check with each of their employees. Um, and that is, there's a checklist that they're doing and we upload that into our project management software so that we have it documented for the school district. Have there been any instances of uh, anyone involved in the project uh, contracting COVID-19? As of today, we have no uh, circumstances with anyone, not only no one, um, anybody that was of concern. I think we had one individual who was in contact with someone who possibly had COVID and the test, he was, he was told to stay home and the testing came back negative. And then we had another individual who called in sick. That individual was told by his doctor to have the COVID-19 test taken and he came back negative as well. In both of those instances, and they, the first one where we thought we had exposure, that was actually prior to the shutdown this more recent one with the individual who was just sick, who had the test on both occasions, as soon as Masera was notified of the situation, um, the district was notified as well. Um, we've been very fortunate to date that we don't have anyone who has been affected or has um, contracted COVID-19. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Nancy, this is uh, Mark Kozlowski. I hi, was, um, hi, um, just had a question, uh, two questions actually on, um, first one being on phase 1D, the, mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of clarification for um, parents, grandparents, um, babysitters that may be picking up uh, students, uh, just to give some clarification where that is. That okay. entry way that you showed, that mm -hmm. is going to be the main entrance in that formal area right there, that last slide. Not this one, but the next, yeah, so that so this one, is, that there. This is from the exterior walking in. Right. And then this is as you walk into, from that entrance into the main building. And if you go to the right, that goes into our Creative Arts Center. And if you go to the left, that is into the admin area. Okay, yeah. And it's very important for people to understand too, is that there will be a vestibule here. It's not, the, the second portion of the vestibule is not installed yet, but there will be a, a, a security vestibule, basically. No one can get from the front right into the school. That's where I wanted to kind of give a picture as to the dimension and size of that. Um, that quarter itself probably looks as if it's uh, roughly how wide, would you say? Oh, it's, it's in excess at of... least 10 feet. Right, so we like, have that. Um, for the for that, and then we'll have a security entrance in that. So, comparatively to what we what people may be remembering from the existing slow building, uh, to what we're experiencing now as far as a security upgrade and actual space to queue up and uh, to meet uh, when we're gathering and when we're pick, doing pickup and drop off in that area. That kind of gives. I didn't want we kind of graced through that section there, but I wanted to kind of pause on that and show everybody what. Uh, that's about the best picture I've seen so far as to what to expect there, so. Yeah, and we um, will, um, as the storefronts and that vestibule becomes, um, I will make a point of making sure we have some pictures that we can share as a part of this slideshows to give, to continue to give parents some understanding of what that looks like. Okay, um, then my second question was, um, when you were, your reference to the retention pond that was there. Yes. Um, this is actually for me to refresh my own memory on this. Um, this retention pond itself, now this is um, for the, the K-2 building, this is an additional retention pond to what's already, what already we had as far as stormwater management at this building. Am I correct? That is correct. Or, okay. 
And it's extremely important that the contractors had to complete this retention bond because in addition to um, it being needed eventually for the, just the water management um, for the project as a whole in the building, but for us to continue our work, this had to be established because it is part of our ENS controls as well. So this so is going to- work, As the work continues in that parking lot, they will need to have that, they had to have that completed prior to, um, but the retention pond will remain. Um, it will be a more finished retention pond at the end, um, but this is what's required to continue the work in the parking lots. So this will add benefit to the actual parking lot area as far as the runoff coming from that particular area where yes. as of right now that kind of just ran down into the area towards the stream itself so we have now we will have an existing retention pond dedicated to that parking lot itself that is correct okay thank you any other questions before i move on okay so for the intermediate school we have the Masons on site. Our stair tower has um, continued to um, get taller. Um, we are, I will mention, um, just to kind of tie into um, what we were previously just speaking about at the primary school, we were full blast, all contractors back, feet on the ground, ready to start working on the 20th of, of um, April. Um, unfortunately, that was not quite the case um, at the intermediate school. And we have um, been dealing with some issues with getting enough Masons on site. Um, I just spoke with RC this, uh, this afternoon and um, they believe they're gonna have a couple additional Masons um, starting tomorrow, but we would normally see more um, going up at this point. Um, like I said, we're hopeful that we're gonna get a few more um, people, but as we all know, we want people to feel comfortable coming to work. And um, with that in mind, um, we need to make sure that uh, people are here and, and working as they can. Um, so we're, you know, we're working towards working through those issues to make sure that we can get people back and that people are coming back and feeling safe. Um, they also have um, started the masonry. Um, uh, for the uh, elevator pit, pit. So this is where the elevator pit is in conjunction to that stairwell. This is all considered part of area, area B. And as I'm sure those of you who drive by the site, you've noticed that we have a tremendous amount of steel work going on. Um, the steel workers were back and they have been back on site for the past two weeks. Um, so they are working on area C steel. This is as of Friday, in addition to most of the steel columns and beams, they have placed um, decking on the ground floor as well as the first floor, at least in areas. And they have placed the steel joists for the roof um, structure. They have also started um, grade beams in area A. So Muchi has been working in that area, getting our rain beams installed. Again, this is our April pay apps, as well as a summary of our change orders for up to uh, this month. And as far as our overall progress, um, 175 days, just like the primary school, we should see the completion of the steel um, for area C soon. Um, they should be finishing up area B, um, at least the stairwell, and they'll be starting the steel in area B. We've actually already received steel um, for area B. It's uh, on site and ready to go. Um, and they will be continuing with the gray beams in A. And as those gray beams are finished, there's waterproofing and backfill um, for those as well. As I stated, um, you know, for this, we had a much slower start um, for the intermediate building. Um, we are working through the schedule right now and seeing what we can do. Um, we are uh, slightly behind 
um, but not behind enough that uh, we don't feel we can recover that schedule. So as the contractors are back and we start working, we're fortunate that it's now summer. Um, so we can, we can be working through, um, you know, getting that, that schedule back on track. Any questions for the intermediate building? Okay, well, that is uh, the slideshows for today. Um, and I will have them again for the next board meeting in June. Thank you, Nancy. Mr. President, that concludes the superintendent's report for this evening. Okay, Nancy, again, thank you. All right. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. We have approval of the minutes for the committee of the whole meeting for April 13th, 2020. The regular voting meeting for April 13th, 2020. The committee of the whole meeting for May 4th, 2020. And the special voting meeting for May 4th, 2020. Need a motion? Mr. President, I move we approve these minutes. <laughs> All signers. Second, anyone? I'll second, Mark Kozlowski. Thanks, Mark. Mr. President, discussion? Yep. Um, if I may, I have a, um, I think this is probably the time to bring it up. Um, something not reflected in the minutes for the May 4th Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Yingling, can you hear me okay? I can hear you, yes. Okay, good, good, sorry. Um, so with regard to the uh, committee of the whole meeting on May 4th, uh, there were statements made about the board members conducting ourselves in a professional way um, during board meetings. We opened with that um, directive and there was, um, I think um, goodwill around those in attendance in understanding and embracing um, a, uh, a, a need to follow Robert's rules of order to conduct ourselves in a professional way as um, members of the community um, entrusted with, you know, the important job of providing an opportunity for, for kids to, um, to develop um, in this school district and to be um, faithful stewards of our, uh, of our neighbor's tax dollars. And um, not all members were in attendance at the beginning of the meeting because as I understand it, there were some technology issues. So that may explain um, why something popped up in the middle of the meeting but it gave me great concern. And because, um, you know, I ran um, for this board um, on the idea that we should be more transparent, that we should um, televise our meetings so that more people had an opportunity to, to come. Um, and, and so I believe that transparency, particularly, uh, given, you know, what we've been entrusted to do is of paramount importance. And there have been questions in the past about uh, this board doing things behind closed doors. So, you know, that's the basis for the concern I'm going to raise. During the meeting, I noticed that I got an email from one of our board members. And that email, um, which I read later, I did not read it during the meeting, that email was sent to me uh, and, and the other board members, um, which means there was one person who wrote it and eight recipients. And then in addition to that, Mr. James Heck, the, um, um, the facilities director of the school. And, and my great concern is this, there is a process for taking bids, sealed bids, um, for 
purchases uh, at the at the school. It's one thing to to question a purchase, a, a piece of equipment, an instrument, that kind of thing. But to for an individual board member to solicit a bid from a single vendor um, brings into question, first of all, if, if we're not working outside of the uh, Sunshine Act, because indeed, at the end of that email, we have a quorum. There are nine board members involved in deliberation or at least um, information regarding a bid from a particular vendor. And, and so my concern is that the public, it wasn't on the agenda, it's not in the minutes, and, um, and that board member went about securing a bid for um, musical equipment and then sent it to all of us for our consideration. And that, I believe, is outside of the sunshine provision. And I'm going to ask our solicitor to, to help me with that. Is, is, that a, is that a rightful concern, sir? Yes, actually, uh, um, I, I didn't receive the email from uh, uh, the board member until the, it was forwarded to me at a later point but it's inappropriate for anyone um, to receive or request um, bids on products that don't go through the appropriate process. Um, those were supposed to be sealed bids. Um, and then to uh, um, request uh, that that bid be awarded, even though it was, a, it was a, for a higher amount is, is questionable. Uh, that conduct is, is is not appropriate. Well, and and that's it, Mr. Solicitor. That is the second. <laughs> that's the other shoe dropping. My first one was that it was done, um, you know, in 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 the dark. Um, that it was done in an email to individual board members. That it was not on the agenda. That it was not made available to the public. Two, the bid. Um, was apparently secured on February 28th and introduced to the board on May 4th and to our director of facilities on May 4th as well. Um, and so I, I wondered about the timing of that. Um, if indeed it was a good natured attempt to save the district and thereby the taxpayers some money. Um, and I certainly echo your concern about um, about then um, recommending to the board that we spend more money <laughs> than we needed to in order to have it with that particular vendor, especially you know my here's my big concern um, it 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 may not be anything inappropriate, but at least it it has the appearance of impropriety for a document with a vendor's a, a document with a vendor's logo addressed to a single board member to, to, uh, to the attention of accounts payable at the district address, but to have that logo and that board member on the document, it's almost as though that board member is acting as an agent for that vendor. And, and I have to wonder what if, I mean, it, 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 hopefully, Hopefully, there's there it, it was innocent enough, but it would almost have the appearance that that there's a conflict of interest, and and God help us, maybe some sort of um, I I I I don't know uh, quid pro quo. I, that that's what it looks like. It looks sketchy, and so um, I wanted to raise that as a concern, and 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 question the ethics of such a move. And and ask for your legal opinion of that. Uh, again, I think that the uh, for any board member to um, request uh, bids um, for products uh, personally is 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 not the process to go through. Um, we have a process set up that the bidders uh, would send that information to the appropriate administrative channel throughout the district. Um, 
it, you know, ethics, I, uh, you know, can't give an opinion on what the ethics commission would do um, with that, with that issue. But I think that it's inappropriate it, it, uh, to conduct uh, that in a manner that those bids go to an individual and then um, for the individual to uh, attempt to have that bidder awarded um, a, a bid in excess of what other bidders that went through the appropriate channels um, that, that's bids were less uh, for him to request to award to that person, I think is uh, uh, inappropriate. Well, thank you. And I don't, and, and it was not my intention and, and, I, and I haven't called anybody out by name because I'm not looking to out him or her in that way. I'm just hoping that it was a one-off mistake and that it never happens again. And that's, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, all in favor of the approving of the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Did you say something, Gary? Your mic is off. Excuse me. I wish to make a comment. Sorry that the mic was off. I believe that the, uh, the um, verbatim versus abstract or the abstract minutes do not accurately reflect the meetings uh, and that more transparency is lost when we don't read in the public comments. Uh, therefore, I will be voting no uh, on the approval of the uh, minutes for the- uh, That's your prerogative. Very good. Motion passes eight to one. Okay, Dr. Prado, reports and information, future dates. Good evening again. Uh, future dates include May 21st, 2020, a finance committee, committee meeting online at 1.30 p.m. Um, and we will be posting that, that information uh, for, for the public uh, after the meeting. So, so we're, we'll record that meeting and, and show it after. Um, June 1st, 2020, committee the whole meeting online and live streamed at, on YouTube at 7.30 p.m. Then on June 15th, we'll have a regular voting meeting online and live streamed uh, as well at 7.30 p.m. In regard, regard to upcoming topics, we will have personnel, college and the high school agreements, NIMSI, a continuation of support, appointments and contracts, the 2020-2021 bill paying resolution, gifts, grants, and donations, budget transfers, and PSBA voting delegates. And it's important to note that the PSBA conference this year uh, will not occur. Uh, it'll, it'll be an online event as opposed to uh, a web-based event as opposed to being in person. And that includes uh, reports and events. Dr. Criano, just a quick clarification. The PSBA voting delegate meeting, is that the one that's normally held in October, the one I've attended in the past couple of years? Correct. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Criano, thank you. Okay, financial reports. I need a motion to approve the Treasury report for April 2020. So moved, Shiner. Second. Second, second Mr. Comment. Second, Mark. Comment. Uh, please explain uh, 0101, the money market withdrawals for over 4.1 million, please. We have multiple bank accounts with First National Bank, which is our primary depository, and that is moving money from an interest-bearing money market account to the non-interest-bearing checking account in order to pay bills and other obligations as they become due. Uh, Mr. Perry, then is it my um, 
understanding that you're clearing out these funds for paying a bills? Well, we're using money that's in the bank account. I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, from what I understand, it looks like that it will be a zero balance in these accounts to pay the bills. Is that correct? No, there will not be a zero balance in that account. Uh, the cash flow for a school district ebbs and flows throughout the year, peaking after the collection of the fall real estate taxes, and then is typically paid down throughout the uh, winter and spring as it enters into the, the summer months and then typically hits a cash flow trough in mid-July before the collection of the next year's real estate taxes begin. So this is just customary cash flow for a school district. Okay. We need a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Oh, we already have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 9 0. Okay, payment of bills. General fund $2,936,877.62. Athletic fund, $55.06. Capital reserve fund of $1,493.01. Construction fund of $760.14. For a total of paid bills of $2,939,185.83. Unpaid bills, general fund of $464,000. $194.63. Technology $68.20. Capital Reserve Fund of $6,708. Athletic Fund of $16,181.64. And Construction Fund of $1,484,000. $358.06 for a total unpaid bills of $2,032,110.53 for a grand total of $4,971,296.36. Food service of $201,482.71 for a grand total, including food service of $5,000,000. $172,779.07. Need a motion. I have, I have a question. Motion and second first. So moved, Schneider. Second, Kozlowski. Comments? I have a comment about the, the food service account. There are a number of checks written for a temporary vendor food service refund. Um, you let, just let me know what those are for? Those are refunds to families that would have deposited money into a student's account. Uh, and then they requested a refund for the balances uh, for this year rather than the district hold that money. So rather than enter every family into our system, we just uh, run it through a temporary vendor. We still have record of who we made those payments to, but uh, for this purpose, it's just listed as a temporary vendor. Okay, thanks. Okay, any comments? All in favor of payment of bills? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Mr. English, your mic is not on again. Thank you. I have some questions regarding the bills. Three points. There are 17 pages of bills with nearly 50 expenditures on parts and supplies and over $100,000 in transportation costs while the district is shut down. Mr. Perry, I have a question before. You're asking this board to approve these bills with vague details and using Director Nevin's comment, these bills descriptions are done in the dark. Uh, I find it very disturbing when I raised issue to uh, the dehumidifiers, they come up two months later as equipment and not as dehumidifiers. 
So it's really hard for the directors to even have an opportunity to scrutinize these bills when the descriptions are very vague. Therefore, I will be voting no on all of these bills. Very good, thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, the motion carries eight to one. Okay, we're moving on to consent and public comments. We had two public comments that, that I know of today. And they'll be put in the minutes. If anybody wants to read them, they can. I wish to comment on the comments, Mr. President. What do you want to do, Mr. English? I'd like to respond uh, and comment on the two visitor comments. My comments. Uh, Mr. Sebulak, I extend my sincere gratitude for acknowledging the building structural issues that require large scale dehumidifiers to prevent mold promoting conditions. It is unfortunate these issues are not discussed with board members when I first brought them to light in January during a curriculum meeting. Also troubling is the vague billing descriptions that I've also uh, reiterated that mass these transactions from review. Uh, with regards to uh, public comment from Mr. Corey, I appreciate the concern about my proposal to delay the curriculum change, which should occur every five years. I asked about what impact a delay would happen until next year. And the response was, Franklin Regional would not be as closely aligned with the state but this is a local school decision. The curriculum has not changed in 15 years, neither has annual tax increases. Uh, in part, this occurred during Mr. Mr. I can't hear you. Gary, you. Gary, you're having a technical problem. Nobody can hear you. Contain and delay costs with over 1.7 million Pennsylvanians filing for unemployment compensation. So I will not ca cast a tax vote that will force citizens out of our community. Debbie, you know something? Uh, this, this repeated and targeted criticism raises issue to section 903 of our school code which I have asked to have placed on the agenda three times. When will this be put on the agenda, Mr. President? 903 right now is not even in use because we don't have any public comments. We do have written uh, public comments, Mr. President, and I've made three requests to have my old business put on the agenda, and I've waited a couple months now. We'll I will again. send you another request tomorrow. Excuse me? I will send you another request tomorrow. Okay. Mr. President. Yes. Uh, this is Mark Kozlowski. I would um, also, I can uh, make a few, uh, just a quick comment uh, regarding the uh, uh, public comments there that um, Mr. Sebulak had issued. Uh, what I've, uh, what I've uh, experienced uh, looking through the different schools is that um, one of the buildings that also requires humidifiers is the Heritage Elementary School that we use. Um, that was the school that contained the music room that was referenced uh, just previously in comments. Um, so that is a school that is being directly addressed right now through the capital improvement plans that we are undertaking. The, uh, the board is moving forward with capital improvement plans. There are dehumidifiers in those buildings. So um, I don't know um, what, uh, what the uh, intent is on those comments is, is to say that uh, um, they, there's not a, a like to the preference of how we're going forward, but we are moving forward and addressing buildings that uh, require dehumidifiers. Dehumidifiers, I mean, I, I apologize. My own home has a dehumidifier in the basement. Uh, so there is need for those in certain rooms in certain climate change through the uh, through the course of the years. So that is something that is needed um, throughout the district in different places. So um, as far as the uh, ELA curriculum, 
there are additional advantages other than just aligning to the needs. Um, if you, I encourage people to go back and look at the discussion. I believe it was two curriculum uh, committee meetings ago that um, this is part of our K through 12 alignment. And uh, this is uh, much needed um, as far as our uh, differentiating and uh, helping empower every student and get the most out of every student. This is a core class and a fundamental class. And I think it's critically important that we as the board look at those core classes and those core curriculums. And if we're looking at a course that has been 15 years overdue, we need to take a hard look at how we're prioritizing things uh, when we look at our budgets. And this is not an easy time. This is a gut-wrenching time as far as budgets and looking at uh, what the states can provide us. And uh, but we need to really look at that and see how we, we can only do what we can do right now in the present and move forward. And this ELA curriculum is set up, it is ready to go, and it has advantages for online learning that can help us move through this uh, COVID-19 process. If it does pan out and if it work, goes longer, this is a curriculum that's designed to move more fluidly with that. So this is a curriculum that has advantages, not just aligning with the um, uh, standards that we're talking about. This is something that can help the district provide equitable education as we have to transition, if we have to transition back and forth from a home environment to a school environment and do the best job we can at one of our core curriculum classes. So that's my thoughts on that particular program. Thank you very much. You're right on both cases, by the way. Thank you. Okay, solicitor's comments. I have no reports for the public session at this time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, consent agenda items. We have 27 consent agenda items. Anybody have any questions or want to, want to pull any consent agenda items? I do, Mr. President. Numbers. I'd like to pull items 4, 5, 6, 11, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 24, and 26. Okay, I need a motion to approve. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 22, 25. 18. Oh, excuse, I'm I mean, sorry. I said 17. 17, okay. 25, and 27. I need a motion to approve those. Second. Schneider. And who's second? Gary English. Uh, bef okay. Discussion. I, I, I'd like to pull number seven, Mr. President. All right. Okay, we've got a motion to approve. One, two, three, eight, nine, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 22, 25, and 27. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 9 0. Okay, we'll go through these one at a time. Number four, Mr. English. Again, my concerns have been uh, uh, the finances of the district. And uh, because of that, um, it's not a good time to spending $217,000 on the curriculum changes. I didn't ask to cancel, but table it until next year, until we get a uh, better feel of where we are financially because of COVID-19. Uh, the same would go with the other uh, curriculum changes. Okay. Number five, Academy Consortium Agreement. We pulled that. Wait a second. Are, are we going to vote these uh, one by one, Mr. England? One by one. I can't need a motion to approve number four. A motion to approve uh, number four, the... Uh... Grade six to 12 English language arts curriculum, 30 day display. Debbie will lean second. Move seconded. 
Any other comments? Hearing that all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries 8 1. Okay, number five, Mr. English, Academy. Well, we should, Mr. Yingling, if I may, what we should do is have a motion and a second and then discuss. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said, Gary. We should, on each one of these individually now, have a motion and a second and then the discussion period. We should not discuss them until we have a motion and a second on the floor. For number five. Uh, Nevin, Nevin, I. Debbie Wolleen, ready to make a motion? Nevin, second. Nevin, second. Okay, Mr. English. Uh, number five, the agreement is for three years. Given the current economics, uh, I don't believe we should enter into a three-year agreement, but a one-year with a two-year uh, additional year option extension until the district realizes the financial fallout of COVID-19. Okay, thank you. All in favor of any other comments? All in favor of the Academy Consortium Agreement, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries 8-1. Need a motion for number six, Catapult Learning. So moved, Shiner. Second, Kozlowski. Okay, Mr. English comments. I uh, question the increase is 17%. I don't believe it's justified and therefore um, the increased cost, um, I'm voting no. Very good. Any other comments? Very good. All in favor of number six? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries 8 1. Number seven. Mr. I, I mean, thought I said something, though. Number seven. Motion to approve. Mr. Schneider made a motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Second, Billy. Okay. Mr. Nevin. Sure. Uh, Mr. Youngling, at the last meeting during the Committee of the Whole meeting, um, we talked with uh, Mrs. Zanella, and she had offered to look into circulation for the um, Tribune Review main sheet, as she referred to it, the main Trib paper, to look at comparative um, uh, circulation within our three zip codes of, you know, Murraysville, Export, Delmont, to compare that to see if indeed um, it, it compared in the way of number of subscribers to the Penn Franklin. And I'm wondering if that information has. Uh, she does have that information for you tonight. I'm sorry? She does have that information for you. She does? Yes, Kara. I do. Good this evening. Yeah. Yes, good evening. Um, I do have uh, information. Uh, I was sent to Mr. Yingling. I believe he shared it with the board today. Um, I've tried to speak with the TRIB. The only thing that I couldn't get for you was a breakdown of the circulation per community that Franklin Regional serves. Uh, when I was, I asked mm. three different departments for that and they were unable to give me, they, they just give the general uh, breakdown on, on the number of uh, newspapers, hard copy newspapers that are circulated. But I also managed to get digital. So if the board would indulge, I have, I can have Mr. Schreckengoss bring up the uh, slide so that everybody can see it and I can talk my way through it if that's, Agreeable to the board. It's fine. Sure. Okay, so if you take a look at the, uh, when we had to, I, the board was given this in a different format, but for uh, the Zoom meeting, we had to break this down. So we'll start with the Penn Franklin, where uh, the Penn Franklin has been the paper of record for a number of years for Franklin Regional. It is a paid subscription. Its total print uh, circulation is 4,000 with the FR communities uh, having 2,500 of that share. And they do not have digital users, which means their newspaper is not online, it is hard copy. 
the legal notices or what are what are um, typically called classified rates uh, lists a dollar twenty five per line with a ten line minimum for uh, legal notices, which would be our meeting notices and any type of uh, bid notices that we would place in the newspaper. The Penn Franklin is a biweekly. It is published on Monday and Wednesday, and it is newsprint only. And it is considered a second class newspaper as far as its mail code goes. Now that, that's gonna become important in a moment. The Tribune Review, it is uh, also paid subscription. Its total circulation is 43,293. And again, I stated that they uh, said they do not release the print circulation for individual communities. However, I did speak with their digital manager uh, and I talked with him at length and he was very kind to give me uh, an average user rate for uh, the digital version of the Tribune Review for our area. And I was surprised to learn that the average is 44,000 users per month, which is pretty significant. So people are moving to an online medium uh, with the Tribune Review. There are legal notice, uh, notice rates uh, for classifieds, uh, logs in at 475 per line, that's weekdays. And if you run them on Sundays, the no notices on Sundays, uh, it goes up to 525. Uh, again, the, the publication frequency is daily. They are a Monday through Sunday paper. They're what we call, consider a daily newspaper. And their medium is both newsprint and digital. They do both. And they, again, when they mail the uh, newspaper, it is a second class uh, stamp that they use on that postage insignia. The Murraysville Star. The Murraysville Star is not a paid publication. It is free. Its print circulation is 11,373 with that, that amount going, of course, directly to the Franklin Regional Communities. Uh, again, a digital users was undetermined. He did not have uh, the moment to figure that out for me. The legal notice rate you will see is not applicable. That is because it is a third class mailing publication. It's free. Uh, again, it's a weekly and it does newsprint and digital. Okay, so the difference on second class and third class the reason why they don't take legal ads for Murraysville Star is they can't. Um, according to uh, the uh, Pennsylvania statute, and I listed that down below, it has to be a paid publication and it has to have a second class mailing, uh, a second uh, mailing class. So that one completely falls off the list for us uh, as far as being able to use that for our legal notices. So the two newspapers that we're looking at would be the Penn Franklin and the Tribune Review. So you can see the difference in the prices. Um, obviously the, the Trib has a large subscription rate for the, the main sheet as I call it. Um, it has a lot of users, uh, digital users. And I, I think that I should note that the Tribune Review posts the legal ads, not only in the newspaper, the news hard copy newspaper, but it also uh, posted online digitally as well. So um, I'll open it up for the board if they have any questions uh, regarding the statistics data. Uh, yeah. Mrs. Uh, Greg Nevin. Yes, Mr. Nevin. So um, I, I am curious because I know it's going to come up from a from a value standpoint. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when we're trying to save every nickel we can, and I and I respect that. However. You and I both come from an advertising background, and I know when it comes to, you know, viewers, listeners, readers by the pound, um, you know, a, a, a four dollar and seventy five cent per line versus one twenty five per line isn't necessarily, <laughs> um, you know, three and a half times more, particularly when you have. Um, what would appear to be a, 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 a much bigger audience. So I am curious, though, because it do we ever exceed 10 lines in one of our legal notices for these meetings? Um, I, I know that our legal notices can get fairly large. Um, if we are, it depends on what the topic is and what we're advertising. So um, they can okay. they can go to that extreme. Sure. Do you have this a is, sense? in general, mm -hmm. what our uh, expenditure was for legal notices over the course of a year in the uh, Penn Franklin? 
I do not have those numbers. I don't know if Mr. Perry has access to those or not. Um, Mrs. Wolf, or, no, sorry, Ms. Wolf uh, is the one that places those ads and I don't see the bills from those. So I do not know how much the district has spent uh, in the past year on those legal ads. Um, Mr. Perry may have that information. Okay. Well, I'm just saying it may cost us three times more per ad, but if what we're talking about over the course of a year is spending, I'll just throw out a number since we don't have one. If we're talking about spending 900 instead of $300, or we're talking about spending 1200 instead of $400, but indeed we're reaching, I mean, when I look at 2,500 total print circulation in the uh, Penn Franklin, and, and particularly in, an, in a world where print is shrinking by the day, that that's probably not 2,500 next year. And, um, and so I'm just looking at where do we reach the greatest number of people um, who are in this community, parents in the community, teachers, and those people who live in these three communities, where do we stand a better chance between online and in a daily newspaper, an actual newspaper um, like the Trib? Uh, I, 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 I question just rubber stamping because we've always done it that way, continuing with the Penn Franklin. I don't, I don't see that we're reaching a significant portion of the community. And, um, and, if, and if there's an opportunity, we're all talking about transparency and people say, well, I didn't even know that you were doing this stuff with, with Sloan. Well, maybe it would help if we were in the right vehicle to reach the public and, and to be able to reach them in print and online. Um, so that's, that's, that's why I asked you, thank you for doing the work that you have done. Um, and that's, that's why I, I can't in good conscience um, rubber stamp continuing with a, uh, with a, with a dying newspaper. Okay, any other comments on uh, paper of record? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve the paper of record. I believe there's already a motion on the floor. I believe we have a motion and a second on the floor, Mr. President. I know what we can I ask, Mr. President, can I ask for a roll call vote on this one? Yes. Who was that? Nevin. Okay. Excuse me, Debbie Woolleen. Um, which. Which newspaper did we motion to vote for? The motion will be for the Penn Franklin, since that's the one we approved last month, the last board meeting. So we we'll do a roll call vote on the Penn Franklin. Mr. President, comment? Yes. Is it possible to consider both, depending on what our needs are whether it's a, uh, a type of advertisement. I know when we go out for bids, we use more than, we probably use both papers. Am I right in that, John? The problem that is, is correct. if we approve both of them, all of our uh, board meeting notices would have to be uh, advertised in both. So that would be a double cost. We do advertise in both? If we, if we pass that they were both our paper of record, that is correct. And when we go out for bids, do we not advertise in more than one paper as it is? That's correct. Placed in, in, in numerous different ways when we're bidding docu uh, bidding uh, items. That's correct. No one answered that. That is correct. So we're Just, advertising those. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, this is Mark Kozlowski. Um, I think to Mr. English's point, then, this, this vote is really... Um, linking us to the paper of record for our required votes. Um, we still have the ability to use, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Anella, but 
we can still go out if we have the need to for other purposes in advertising to use other papers such as the trip am i correct on that that's correct okay that is correct okay we have done that mr president can i make a comment please yes um i know that the bulk of the people that have students in the school district they're actually using the school's website i don't think that you know to, to what the that Mr. Nevin was saying, which is probably true. A lot of people are going to the digital age. And I think that's very true for our uh, parents of our students in the school district. But for the bulk of the rest of the people in the community that do not have children in the schools, they're pretty much reading the local paper. And the trip, uh, which I do get the trip, but the trip, when you look at the circulation, that's all the Westmoreland County. And we really don't have the targeted numbers for what people really get in our actual school district. This is just more of a general, it looks like a big number, but that's because we're encompassing uh, the paper of record for Westmoreland County is the trip, not the Post-Gazette. And so it's really kind of a, it looks like a big number, but really it's a misleading number because it's not targeting the three communities that serve our school. I believe that the children and the parents of our children, uh, they're reading our information on our website. That's my, that's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. English? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mr. Midderator? Yes. Mr. Nevin? No. Mr. Shiner? Yes. Mr. Weinman? No. Mrs. Willeen? It's three. Mrs. Wolleen? Uh, no. Mr. Yant? Yes. Mr. Yingling? Does say? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yes. So motion carries for the Penn Franklin B paper record. Okay, next thing pulled. Uh, Number 11, I need a motion to, for music instrument purchases. So moved, Shiner. Second, moderator. Thank you, guys. Okay, Mr. English, music instruments. Again, um, I question uh, the, the, the bidding process. Um, none of the, not all of them were local firms. I asked uh, before about the lowest responsible bidder. Uh, do these bids include delivery, inspection, local service, and setup? Uh, I've also noted that in today's uh, list of bills, there were repairs. Uh, so uh, again, there's multiple firms here. And uh, I, I ask, you know, what the costs are for delivery, inspection, local service, setup, and even the recurring costs, we're spending over $30,000 every year on instruments. And now I just saw a repair of an instrument as a list of bills. So I'm looking at uh, uh, how these bids are actually being picked. And if in fact, uh, they include the delivery inspection, local service and setup. And therefore I, uh, I again asked, specifically the lowest responsible bidder. It's not always the lowest bidder. So are there additional costs in, uh, besides the bid itself? Any other comments about musical instruments? Hearing none, all in favor of musical instruments? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Opposed. Motion carries eight one. I need a motion for a propane stripper. I motion that we pass that. Motion, Bill Yant. Motion made by Ed, second by Bill Yant. Okay, Mr. English. Yeah, and I didn't see uh, any of the other bids other than uh, two of them for $1,800. And uh, therefore, uh, I can't, uh, uh, I've also uh, questioned the Betco machine in the past 
why we would need two additional tanks if they already have used Beko in the past. So without seeing uh, other bids, um, I cannot vote in favor of this. So my vote will be no. Okay, all in favor of the propane strippers. Aye. 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 No. Motion carries 8-1. Number 18, I need a motion. Commissioning services for primary school construction project. What numbers, Mr. Ying, what, Ying, what number are we on? 18. Okay, thank you. you need a motion? So move. moved. Second. Moved by Greg Nevin, second by Ed Mitterator. Comments? Comments? I'm, um, my stance on the Sloan construction uh, has not wavered, therefore I will be voting no. Okay, you're going to do the same on the 19. 18, 19, 20. 20. Yeah, that is correct. So can we just make, make, I need a, can I make a motion for approval of 18, 19, 20, and 21? So move. Bill Yant. Second, Scheider. And 26, I'm sorry. 18, and 26. 18, 21 and 26. 21. We got a motion by Mr. Scheider. Uh, Mr. Yant, motion. And a second by Mr. Yant. Either way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Pardon me? Okay, all in favor of 18, 19, 20, 21. 24 and 26. Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries 8 1. <laughs> okay. Number, I need a motion for Chromebooks. Number 24. So moved. Nevin. Willian, second. Debbie Berwillian, second. Okay, Chromebooks, comments. How many incoming fre uh, freshman students Franklin Regional has? Um, I believe there's 278 coming in next uh, next year and I budgeted uh, for 10 extra. Um, typically we'll have a couple kids that'll come into the district and we might have, if we have any debt on arrival, we'll have something to give those students. But you were requesting 400 units at 250, uh, a unit? No, there's two different Chromebook purchases. The one Chromebook purchase is a replacement of 400 Chromebooks that we bought for it four years ago. They'll be turning five um, is for the 400. And then the other uh, request was for the incoming freshman, which I believe is 200. I have it right here, 287, 287 Chromebooks for the incoming freshman class. I believe the last time I checked, there was 10 less than 287. And which, okay, there are two different, okay, so on 23, is that uh, what you're referring to as far as replacements? No, 23 is the one-to-one -one Chromebooks and cases. That's for the incoming freshman class. And how many units are on that on 23? 287. Okay, I had uh, made comments on the 287 uh, on number 23 that the uh, responsibility of the student to take care of those. And I think the nominal cost of $12 per case should be uh, picked up by the, uh, the students rather than the taxpayers. And if that, uh, uh, if we can't get uh, some savings there, then I will be voting against 23. Okay, any other comments on Chromebooks? Did we not already approve 23? We I'm did. Sorry. Sorry, Paul, what did you say? I think we've already approved item 23. We did. So, so we're talking about item 24. 24 it was. So I need a vote for Chromebook replacements on 24. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. <laughs> Okay. 
<laughs> now we're going to for a roll call vote on the Northern Westmoreland Career Technology Center budget approval. Need a motion for the Northern Westmoreland Career Technology budget. So yeah. moved. Move, Mr. Nevin. Pauline, second. Debbie, second. Thank you. Any comments? Hearing no comments, I need a roll call vote. Mr. English? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mr. Mitterrader? Yes. Mr. Nevin? Yes. Mr. Shiner? Yes. Mr. Weinman? Yes. Mrs. Woleen? Yes. Mr. Yant? Yes. Mr. Yingling? Yes. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Everybody have, a great, everybody have a great Memorial Day. Have a uh, safe one. Thank you, sir. Everybody, too. Thank President. You. God bless you. Pardon me? We're done. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Herb. Thank you.